Hi guys. So today we'll be doing the test your knowledge questions of India's 10 events after the reporting date as promised. So let's just dive right into it. Question number one, ABC Limited has announced its interim results for quarter one ending 30th June 2000 X2 on 5th July X2. However, till that time, the AGM for the year X1, X2 was not held. The financial statements for X1, X2 were approved by the board of directors on 15th of July X2. So when was the financial statement supported by the BOD on 15th July X2? So that signifies that this is the end of the reporting period as per the definition in India still. So they have asked the question, what will be the after the reporting period as per the definition given in India still? The reporting after the reporting period is uh, 30th June till 15th of July X2. So let us just check our answer once. For the purpose would be the period between 31st March and 15th of July X2. Question number two. ABC Limited is in a legal suit with the GST department. The company gets a court order in its favor on 15th of April X2, which resulted into reducing the tax liability as on 31st March X2. The financial statements for X1, X2 were approved by the board of directors on 15th of May X2. So this tells us that, <coughs> so this tells us that the events after the reporting period comprise from the period 31st March X2 till 15th of May X2. <coughs> so the company has, <coughs> sorry, the company has got a court order in its favor on 15th of April X2 which is falling in the period before approval of financial statements. Hence, it will be an adjusting event also because the legal suit is already in uh, progress during the year. That is why it will be an adjusting event. And hence, uh, since the, since it has, let us read the question first, the management has not considered the effect of the transaction as the event is favorable to the company. The company's view is that favorable events after the reporting period should not be considered as it would hamper the realization concept of accounting. So this is a wrong interpretation by the management because events after the reporting date definition clearly states that the event could be favorable or unfavorable both. And hence the company should rec recognize the effect of this event. Question number three, if you want to just check the answer once, question number two answer. As per India S10, even favorable events need to be considered. Uh, question number three, ABC Limited is trading in laptops. On 31st March 2000 X2, the company has 50 laptops which were purchased at 45,000 each. The company has considered the same price for calculation of closing inventory valuation. So it has considered cost for the valuation of inventory which is 45,000. Uh, on 15th April X2, advanced version of same series of laptop is introduced in the market. Therefore, the price of the current laptop crashes to 35,000 each. The financial statements for X1, X2 were approved by the BOD on 15th May X2. So this is the end of the uh, event after the reporting period date. The company does not want to value the stock at 35,000 less estimated cost necessary to make the sale as the event of production and selling price took place after 31st March X2 and the reduced prices were not applicable as on 31st March X2. So this interpretation by the company is again wrong. If the if the asset which is existing on 31st March is sold in the, in the period before the financial statements are approved by BOD, it only gives us more information about the net realizable value. And since there is a new uh, uh, series that has been launched, the current laptop prices have crashed at 35,000. So cost is 45,000 and NRV is 35,000, whichever is less inventory should be valued as per NDS2. Accordingly, the price of the lap, the valuation of the inventory should be at rupees 35,000. We'll just check the answer once. <clears throat> Question number three, as per NDS10, the decrease in the net realizable value of the stock after reporting period should normally be considered as an adjusting event. Now question number four, one second, this is a tricky question. Let's just see what it is. XY Limited had taken a large size civil construction contract for a public sector undertaking valued at rupees 200 crores. Execution of the project started during X1, X2 and continued in the next financial year also. During the course of execution of the work on May 29th, X2, the company found while raising the foundation work that it had met a rocky surface and cost of contract would go up by an extra rupees 50 crore. So basically the company had taken a contract of 200 crores, some kind of large size civil construction contract. 
to construct something and suddenly it has met a rocky surface and the cost of the contract would go up by an extra 50 crores which would not be recoverable from the contractee as per the terms of the contract so the contractor would have to bear this extra 50 crore the company's financial year ended on 31st march x2 and the financial statements were considered and approved by the board of directors on 15th of june x2 so the approval by bod is on 15 june x2 so accordingly events after the reporting date are between 31st march x2 and 15th of june how will you treat the above in the financial statements for the year ended 31st march x2 so how are you going to answer this is that uh, the rocky surface the company has met a rocky surface during the construction of the civil construction and accordingly cost is going to go up by 50 crores so the question here is should we recognize this extra 50 crores in the financials as on 31st march so you should be recognizing this since the rocky surface was already there as on 31st march it is just that the company did not know about the existence of this rocky surface the company came to know about the existence of this only subsequently and that subsequently was on may 29th which is before the approval of the financial statements by the board of directors and accordingly the company should accrue this extra cost of 50 crores in its financial statements let us just read the answer of this question question number four see the execution of work started during fy x1 x2 and the rocky surface was there at the end of the reporting period though the existence of rocky surface is confirmed after the end of the reporting period as a result of which it became uh, evident that the cost may escalate by rupees 50 crores if you see below therefore it is an adjusting event now question number five question number five a limited was required to pay penalty for a breach in the performance of a contract a limited believed that the penalty was payable at a lower amount than the amount demanded by the other party a limited created a provision for the penalty but also approached the arbitrator with a submission as the case may be dismissed with costs a limited prepared the financial statements for the year x1 x2 which were approved in july x2 the arbitrator in June X2 awarded the case in favor of A Limited. As a result of the award of the arbitrator, the provision earlier made by A Limited was required to be reduced. The arbitrator also decided that the cost of the case should be borne by the other party. Now, whether A Limited is required to remeasure its provision and what would be the accounting treatment of the cost that will be recovered by A Limited. So, this question is fairly simple. The Financials were approved in July X2, which, which means that the events after the reporting period comprised from 31st March X2 till July X2. And this arbitrator award was given to the company in June X2. The arbitrator announced the judgment in favor of A Limited. Accordingly, it will be an adjusting event since it is only providing us more evidence of conditions that existed as at uh, year end. So accordingly, now the provision will have to be reduced. And regarding the fact that um, the cost will now be recovered by A Limited from the other party. So that would mean that there is a contingent asset, but this is not giving us more evidence of conditions that existed as at your end. In X1, X2, we did not know that we would get a contingent asset. This fact has become known to us only in June X2. So it is not giving us more evidence of conditions that existed as at year end, that is of uh, March X2. Accordingly, we will recognize a contingent asset in, sorry, we will recognize a contingent asset only in X2, X3. So let us check the answer of this question, question number five. So see. On the basis of the above, a contingent asset should be recognized in the FS of the period in which the realization of asset and the rated income becomes virtually certain. In the instant case, the recovery of cost became certain when the arbitrator decided the award during FY X2 X3. Accordingly, the recovery of cost should be recognized in the financial year X2 X3. Okay, so next question, question number six, important question. A company manufacturing and supplying process control equipment is entitled to duty drawback if it exceeds its turnover above a specified limit. To claim duty drawback, the company needs to file application within 15 days of meeting the specified turnover. If application is not filed within stipulated time, the department has a discretionary power of giving the duty drawback credit. So what does the question say till this point? 
the question is saying that if the company exceeds a specified turnover it is entitled to duty drawback it will get some money refund some of the duty that it has paid it will get a refund of that right but it has to for this it has to file an application within 15 days of meeting meeting the specified turnover it has to file the application within 15 days if it does not file application within 15 days then the department has a discretionary power so what does this mean the department if it wants can give the company duty drawback but if it does not want to it may even uh, refuse the duty drawback to the company because it has a discretionary power if application is filed after 15 days now for the year x1 x2 the company has exceeded the specified limit of turnover by the end of the reporting period so x1 x2 end you know that you have uh, exceeded a specified turnover limit so you are entitled to a duty drawback but the application is filed on april 20th x2 so basically they have not been able to file the application within 15 days and accordingly now uh, the department will have a discretionary power which is after the stipulated time of 15 days of meeting the turnover condition duty drawback has been credited by the department of 28th june x2 and financial statements have been approved by the board of directors of the company on july 26th x2 whether duty drawback credit should be treated as an adjusting event now the credit of duty drawback should not be treated as an adjusting event because it is only giving us now see i'll tell you the reason why july the 31st march to july 26th is events after the reporting period now as at 31st march you have crossed that turnover and hence you know that you are going to receive the um, duty drawback provided you file within 15 days now you have not filed within 15 days and you have filed only after 20 days which is giving rise to a contingent asset you may or you may not receive the duty drawback uh, which depends on whether the department wants to give it to you so the entire onus is on the department if it wants to give or does not want to give only on june 28th you come to know that the department has given you the credit and this fact was not known as at 31st March. Accordingly, you should only book a contingent asset and the fact that it has become an asset should be realized only in the next year. Let us check the answer for question number 6. In accordance with the above, the, the duty drawback credit which was a contingent asset for the FY X1, X2 should be recognized as an asset and related income should be recognized in the reporting period in which the change occurs that is in the period in which the realization becomes certain that is FY X2, X3. Just extending on what I explained in question number 6. Uh, the fact that you are going to get the duty drawback only became certain in the next year accord even though it is before the before the approval date of fs but it was not giving you any evidence of conditions that existed as on 31st march on 31st march you knew you were entitled to duty drawback but you did not know if you will get it or not and you filed on april 20th so it was completely discretionary only when the department said that it will give you it gave you further existence of conditions that existed as on April 20th, not as on 31st March. So I hope you get that difference. Question number 7. XYZ Limited sells goods to its customers with a promise to give discount of 5% on the list price of the goods provided that the payments are received from customer within 15 days. XYZ Limited sold goods of Rs 5 lakhs to ABC Limited between 17th March and 31st March. ABC Limited paid the dues by 15th April with respect to sales made between 17th March and 31st March X2. Financials were approved by the Board of Directors on 31st May. So your event after the reporting date will be between 31st March and 31st May X2. So accordingly now this discount you have promised on you have promised before 31st March that you will give a discount if you pay within 15 days. That person has also paid within 15 days. So you will have to adjust for the discount in your financials because even though this event has occurred after the financials, it is only giving you more evidence of conditions that existed as on balance sheet date. Let us read the answer of question number 7. Pretty straightforward question. It is an adjusting event accordingly XYZ Limited should adjust the sales made to ABC Limited with respect to discount of rupee of 5% on the list price of the goods. Question number 8. 
whether the fraud related to X1, X2 discovered after the end of the reporting period but before the date of approval financial statements for X3, X4 is an adjusting event. It is, we have already studied that fraud or errors are always adjusting events if they belong to the reporting period but have been subsequently discovered. So here it is belonging to the reporting period X1, X2 but it is subsequently uh, subsequently discovered. So let us treat the answer. Question number 8. India and in paragraph 9 specifically provides that the discovery of a fraud or error after the end of the reporting period that shows the financial statements are incorrect is an adjusting event. Such a discovery of fraud should be accounted for in accordance with India's 8 if it meets the definition of prior period error. Okay, this is also a case of prior period because if you see the question it says uh, it says x1 x2 so your reporting period is x2 x3 and you you in x you are determining in x3 x4 that a fraud has occurred in x1 x2 but your reporting period currently is x2 x3 so in x2 x3 you will make a prior you will uh, disclose a prior period error and you will adjust that prior period error in x2 x3 financials okay Question number 9. X Limited was having investment in the form of equity shares in another company as at the end of the reporting period. That is 31st March X2. So this is an investment after the end of the reporting period but before the approval of FS it has been found that the value of investment was fraudulently inflated by committing a computation error. Again fraud error it has to be adjusted. Whether such event should be adjusted it has to be adjusted. In day 10 explicitly provides that any fraud or error has to be adjusted. The same is an adjusting event. You can see question number nine. So this covers all our test and knowledge questions from the module. I hope you all have been able to understand every single question. If you all still have any doubts or queries, you all can write to me in the comment section. Please do like, comment and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching this video and see you in my next video. Bye.